Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number seven of Project Odyssey, in which we are going to launch the KSS module number two, which contains life support. However, at the end of the last episode, you might remember that I said we were having some difficulties. In fact, I spent six or seven hours working on trying to solve a bug where I could take my rocket out to the launch pad and all of a sudden it was no longer functioning. So here's a little bit more detail about what actually was going on when that was failing. All right, we're here in the VAB, and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to launch the KSS-2. We're going to take the crew out because we send it up without any crew on board, and now we're going to try to launch it. So the important thing to note here is look at the throttle. So I'm going to hit the shift key to try to throttle it up. The throttle is working just fine. Okay, now we're going to go back into the vehicle assembly building and make one small change. We will go up here, grab this by the centaur stage, and then just reconnect it back up again. Clear the crew and try to launch. Okay, go to throttle. Nothing. I'm slamming that key. Slamming it doesn't help either. Because, you know, sometimes if you slam the key really hard, of course that helps, right? So, but, watch. Hit the, uh... Actually, nothing's happening. I used to be able to hit the SAS and turn it on. I used to be able to stage it. Nope, nothing's happening anymore. It says up here, connected. Let's try doing a control from here. Look at that. No connection to send command on. Connected. Nothing. Throttle. SAS. Nothing's working. All right. Back in the vehicle assembly building. Okay. Now, this time, we're going to grab the payload, which I have the bottom part here. Uh, it is connected to a docking port, a new common berthing docking port. We'll leave that connected there. That was my root part, that docking port right there. So that means I can take the payload, and I had to recraft this, especially to put that docking port as the root node, because originally the root node had been what I'm holding. It had been this. So I completely redid the thing from scratch. Now, we'll attach this. All we did was lift it up and put it back down again. We're going to clear the crew and try to launch again. All right, here we are, and throttle up. Oh, look at that. SAS control, RCS control. Wait, I turned on RCS and I lost my throttle. What? Okay, this is new. I'm just finding out about this one now. Turning on the RCS is making the throttle go to zero. Turning it off and it goes back to full. Let's try control from here. Oh, no, that hit rename. Control from here. Yeah, it says fine. Now I'll turn on the RCS. No. It still is okay. What? Uh, all right, let's see what happens if I, uh, if I actually stage it and then turn off the RCS after it starts to fail to launch. Oh, it's actually going up. It's actually going up. It didn't seem to care. I can turn the RCS off and on. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, I don't know. There's some kind of weird other bug there that doesn't seem to be affecting anything. So to quickly summarize that, we have discovered that if I take this and I pull it away and I reconnect it, we cannot launch. If we take this and we pull it away and we reconnect it, we can launch. So apparently the order in which the parts get attached matters right now in Remote Tech 2 under the 023.5 version of KSP. That was a very, very hard one to try to find. I kept on rebuilding the rocket different ways, trying to see if I could find anything. And I think I just eventually, through process of elimination, got it down to where I realized that it was something about the order of the parts. And then I tried different ways of putting the parts together until eventually, that's when I found that I needed the root part uh, the way that it was there, where the one side was the problem and the other side wasn't. 
Well, things weren't completely unproductive that whole time. You can see I'm working on my toolbar right now, setting all the buttons the way that I want them and stretching it out so that they fit along that top there. Although it looks like there's not enough space in there. I'm gonna bump into the little controls that let you select all those different things. Like, you know, do I wanna show my ships? Do I wanna show my space stations, whatever. But before I had done that, if we wanna go back one more time into the past to look at how I was launching, even after I had figured out what the problem was, you can see my payload there. Because I reconstructed the rocket, I had forgotten to put my struts back on. So we had to try one more time to launch. This will surely be the one, right? Nothing else could go wrong anymore. Well, something did. You're getting a little sneak peek at the payload right there, but not for long because on that launch attempt, I hadn't just forgotten the struts and last time, I had forgotten the struts and the RCS jets. Without S RCS, I was going to have no chance of actually docking once we get there. It's just too big. I can't maneuver it in with the size of it there. I'd probably, sp like maybe I could, but I'd spend hours trying to get it lined up just right. So we launch again, and before I actually show you that one, because that's another failure. However, it's a failure that allows you to see the payload. Why don't we see the payload in all its glory with a legitimate launch? And here it is. The launch that is going to successfully get our payload into orbit. Is the, it's the KSS-23. I guess we're on a 3 now. Actually, we're going to call it the Odyssey Station. We're going up to the Odyssey Station, even though I numbered them so far as KSS-1 and KSS-2 as far as the launchers, and that's just because I'm representing it as like it's like it's a Kerbin space station and therefore it's KSS, but really we're going to call it the Odyssey. So Odyssey Station is going to be where we stop off to supply our ships. Uh, that are going to be heading off to Duna. We're going to stop there and supply them with any additional fuel they might need, any supplies they might need. It'll be a stopping point where they can all gather up and be able to go together because this particular mission to Duna, once we finally get around to it, is going to be multiple ships all traveling at the same time together, all heading off there to Duna, trying to find our way back to our original dimension our original home because even though it's really nice here it is uh, not very crowded oh that reminds me actually i'm using the visual enhancements mod and that thing puts city and street lights down all over the planet like in when it's dark there shouldn't be any street lights and anything like that no streets on this planet so i probably should disable the actual lights down on the surface However, it looks really cool too. Ah, I'm so torn. Now I don't know what to do. Do I be realistic or do I let it be pretty? I probably should make it be realistic. Anyway, our payload is deploying. And now, because this is going to give you a good look at what the payload is like, pretty soon here we'll go back and we'll see what that last failure was all about. But I want you to get a good chance to see the payload before it's being destroyed. See it here in its nice, pristine state as we maneuver our way up uh, to meet that opposing orbit of the Odyssey station. And here we go, flipping it over. Oh, look at that. It's got some really pretty windows in the side, a solar panel up on top. It's got a whole bunch of life support systems stretched out in between there from the front to the back all along the top right there. Ah, oh, look at that one. That is so good. I like the way that thing came out. I went through, I don't know, six different iterations of what I thought I will. Oh, 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 it's getting away. Why is it getting away from me here? Let's pull it back. Okay, a little throttle down. Uh, it's coming back. Okay. I went through six iterations probably of different types of setups that I wanted to put on that upper stage there. One well, the upper stage, the module, the... ECLSS, which stands for Environmental Control and Life Support Systems, ECLSS. That's the same thing that they have on real space stations, ECLS, or sometimes they add the extra S or not. But anyway, if we want to go back now into the past where the payload had deployed, but 
I realized that there wasn't quite enough monopropellant on there because we're using that for all of our attitude control. And I'm going to find out that I've run out of monopropellant here or didn't pack enough because it's going to run out. And there we go. We have run out of mono, and now I don't have any way of actually getting to the station and docking up. So the first time I failed, I hadn't put RCS jets on it, so that was going to make it impossible to dock. This time, it has run out of mono for attitude control, so even though we have the RCS jets, it's still not going to dock. However, I might be able to get it into orbit as long as I can do some burns as I'm passing above the horizon or through the prograde marker. However, it turns out that I'm not actually randomly in my spin here pointing in that direction often enough. The spin is too slow and there isn't enough vector control on the engine to maneuver this gigantic payload that weighs something like 35, 40 tons. Actually, that's going to turn out to be another failure story in a moment, but we'll get back to that. Instead, I decide this one just doesn't have much of a chance, and we let it come down into the atmosphere, where deadly re-entry shows whether or not its stats are finally set correctly. And what do you think, Kerbinauts? Do you think maybe the deadly re-entry stats are now set up? the way that makes it look pretty cool as it's re-entering and burning things up? I think so. All right, now we get back to the present time. We're ready for another failure. I mean, no, we're ready for another success. Well, we better be ready for another failure is what we should be, because now that we've deployed our solar panel and we're feeling all good about ourselves, thinking this is going to be the one, and we just need to get it up to match the other orbit and rotate it here so that it's facing the sun, taking a quick peek over our shoulder back there for a second to make sure that we are pointing toward the sun. Now it's nothing but clear sailing from here all the way to the end. And I say sailing because that ended up looking like a sail to me. So, all right, what do we have to do now? We have to set up our maneuver node that'll intercept the target, but I realize now looking at this, there isn't enough fuel. Oh, I know what happened. So back when I realized I didn't have enough monopropellant, I went back in and I added some monopropellant, but I didn't look at the delta V. The monopropellant had added enough mass that now we weren't actually going to make it all the way up to the station. We made it to orbit, but only halfway to the final destination. So it's time to launch an orbital refueling rocket. Uh, I decided that maybe what I could try to do with this one is just throw together a uh, Centaur upper stage 2.75 or 2.5 meter, the Centaur. And if we take that and just put it on a regular launcher and send that up, but with a docking port up on top hiding underneath that fairing, maybe we could just meet up with Odyssey Station's KSS-2 launch, dock up to it because it has a couple docking ports on there, transfer over enough fuel to let it complete its mission and get up as far as it needs to, and then we could deorbit this Centaur once it's pretty much drained. However... I hope you're ready for inception level fa failure because this one is also going to run out of mono propellant. Look at that, it has 50 mono in there and it seems like that should be enough, right? Because I mean, how much maneuvering could I need to do? The problem is there are no gyroscopes on these because I'm trying to be a little bit more realistic about the size of the gyroscopes that are on my rockets and I'm using mono propellant in order to do my maneuvering, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more realistic. And so it's burning up the mono a lot faster. Plus I've rebalanced everything and I'm still getting used to the different balances of my engines and my fuel sizes and my efficiencies and my mono. So we're here, we're lining ourselves up. We're coming in for that two kilometer intercept. I'm getting that down now, a little burst of engine here, getting it down to one kilometer intercept. Ultimately we'll have this down to only about 300, maybe less
less than 300, 200 something meters away. And that's when everything is going to come crashing to a halt because that's when we're going to see Mono's pretty low. In fact, I probably saw Mono's pretty low right here. Like, oh, I don't know that I'm going to have enough. I think I turn off the Mono to try to not use it up while I'm maneuvering, try to just use the vectoring on the engine itself and do a little bit maneuvering like that but it just wasn't enough and the mono's dropping down with every little maneuver I'm making. See right there, now you can see the uh, mono is, at, or the RCS is turned off because I'm trying to save that last little bit and ultimately, no good. I just didn't have enough. So now we need a refueling launch to refuel the refueling launch. But before we get to that, let's go to the vehicle assembly building and take a look at the rocket that we're trying to send up there right now. So we have our FASA launch clamps here still feeding our fuel and electricity into the two different stages of it. And if we work our way from the bottom, you can see I'm using for the first time that other FASA clamp, which holds down the engine right there. Now this is all the same as the last time we were in here, so I'm just going to skip past that. We're gonna go up in here. Well, though I did notice that when I got the latest version of uh, Lackluster Labs, which is where I'm, yeah, no wait. No, I'm getting that from Near Future. Uh, the latest version of Near Future, these textures have changed color. They used to be a different color, now they're blue. But whatever, they still do the same function. Uh, these, I tried them out, I said I was going to, and I'm not so sure I like those being on there. They were providing just a little bit too much thrust and throwing the whole rocket a little out of balance. So maybe we need to go back to those B9 ones. I'll change my sub assembly if I do decide to do that. And all this is the same, you've seen this before. So we'll work our way up here into the payload. Now all I did was I took my Centaur and I stuck it underneath a uh, docking port with a little thing here for the fairing and just stuck it up in there. But uh, obviously that wasn't good enough. So the way that I just got through fixing it was we took a new tank and I brought that in, filled that with monopropellant as well, bring this up inside there, and then we put our fairing up on top. But before I was totally done, I also wanted to add a little extra space in here to make sure that I had some solar panels. So I brought in some more tanks and also had some lights on there. So a couple of those tanks extended it up and that allowed me to put that on there and we put some lights on there and a bunch of uh, jets here to try and give it some stability because it was so far off from the center of mass. The center of mass was down here and so the, there was an uneven amount of torque being applied. So I put on a whole bunch of these things up at the top that made it relatively balanced. But if I change the ones down at the bottom, I'm going to have to change these too. So if I ever use this again, it'll be a little different. And of course, then we have our solar panels on there because I didn't know how long I was going to have to orbit around until we got to, to the right location. And so now the new and improved refueling vehicle is on its way up, launching from KSC here in our alternate reality on its way to the other refueler that we have now stranded in orbit basically we'll dock up with that we'll provide it some mono no actually wait no i'm gonna take that back let's dock up with it transfer transfer its fuel over to us we'll dock ourselves up because we're holding more monopropellant in our tanks and so we want to dock this one to the space station to transfer our mono from here into that but we don't want to waste the fuel because you know we have those new rules about efficiency and using up everything and not to mention we're needing to get out there and start using kethane because we don't have enough fuel so we're going to take everything we can we're going to suck that thing almost dry we're pushing our orbit out here to meet that other ship right now that satellite is not satellite well i guess technically it's a satellite because anything orbiting something else is a satellite whether it's a moon or a space station or whatever but anyway i digress once we've taken everything we can out of that other one that we stranded we will leave just a little itty bit and then it will deorbit with that tiny bit we have left over. Now right there you saw that I was rotating to make sure my solar panels were facing the sun. I haven't made that mistake thankfully in a very long time, but I used to do that one all the time where I'd get up there and instead of having them go north-south, I'd have them go east-west as if I was flying sideways along the planet, just like in the orbit here. 
and that would put the solar panels flat on with the sun and it wouldn't get any sun and it would run out of power and you know what happens then. I mean, that's as bad as back when I used to forget to actually put the solar panels out in the first place. And fortunately, I don't do that anymore either. However, this is like 2,000, 3,000 hours of playtime later when I finally got it right. It took a really long time for I don't know what reason to remember to just put out the solar panels. Oh, how hard can it be? I even used that mod that one time. Let's see, what, what is it called? Action group something. I don't know. There's these little boxes and you can put the boxes on the side of your craft. Some kind of action group thing, a staging thing. So when you hit stage, it actually causes your action group to trip. So if you put your solar panels in group like one, two, or three, and you put the box for one, two, or three, whichever one, on one of your stages, and when it stages off, the action group triggers. And so you could put it on an upper stage that you know would be out of the atmosphere. And that was really useful, and that got me through uh, some amount of time, a couple months. But uh, then ultimately, I just started remembering, and I didn't want to put the box on every single time anyway. Okay, so we have transferred our fuel, you saw there with the TAC fuel balancer docked up fairly easily got it all transferred over with a little bit left down in that other one so that we can deorbit it and here it goes we just needed to get clear a little bit here had to pop the mono on for that other one transfer over there move it out of the way and then a little retro burn and whoosh off we go and here we go to oh look at that we're way down in the atmosphere on the periapsis so we can switch back over to the more fuel carrying whatever you want to call it and now start making our way over to KSS 2 module. This is the life support module that needs to go up and dock to KSS 1, which I don't know what we're going to call them. When we were making the ISS, everything had a name. You know, we had the uh, Zvizda, the Zerya, the Unity, and Destiny, and everything like that, right? Well, we need some names for these things, I guess, so we should start thinking about what those are. I don't have any names yet. How about you suggest some names down in the comments? For now, I'm just going to go with calling them KSS1 and KSS2. But uh, you give me some comments, I'll pick out the best ones, and then in the future episode, we will rename them to those names that are picked by the community. Oh, speaking of names, I remember our saying that I was going to call one of my launchers the uh, Titan Launcher. Well, there is a Titan that is an actual rocket already as well. Uh, oh, there we go. We're uh, coming up close here. Don't want to get distracted here. So uh, obviously you can see we have the shielded docking ports and we just went over, opened one up, and now we're going to come in here. I'll get back to the whole Titan naming thing in a second because check this out. Notice that other craft, it's spinning. So here I am playing this awesome ballet of trying to keep myself oriented while that ship is actually moving, spinning, rotating in every possible direction. I spend, I don't know, maybe this is going at like 10 times normal speed. I spent a few minutes, but ultimately look at that slow-mo dock up. Finally got there, docked it up. We can transfer over all of that fuel. And of course, I'm going to forget to actually transfer over the monopropellant. So in a second here, you're going to see me undock and go, oh, wait, wait, no, damn it, monopropellant. So we back up and we push back up again because when you have when you want to redock with something you have to back away from it a certain amount before it'll actually register that your magnets are now functioning again and capable of redocking so by pulling back that 10 20 meters whatever it is and then pushing my way back in I was able to trip the redocking capability and put the mono in and now with a little bit left over we can go deorbit this although I think my settings in this particular case are a little bit too high maybe for deadly re-entry because that one just BAM it's just gone anyway now we'll wait for our orbit to zip around here we're catching up on the other station and then we're gonna be able to push our way up with that stage there we got our centaur all nice and fueled up and full of mono propellant so that we can now make our burn to transfer up the KSS 2 to the KSS 1 and getting ready to dock those two together 
Okay, so while we wait for this to get into position, uh, back to the name of the Titan. So since we already have a Titan in our world, I was thinking that instead of calling it an Atlas or a Titan, because both of those were actually types of Titan, well, not actually types of Titan. Titan is a type. Atlas is a type of Titan. So how about we go with the anti-Titan, the Gorgon? So this is going to be the Gorgon. Well, not this one. Oh, I'm getting all confused now. I'm confusing myself. The 3.75 meter launcher, it was going to be called the Titan. But no, I'm going to call it the Gorgon. So when you get my craft files, if you see the subassembly and it's called Gorgon, now you're going to know why. And now I was coming in a little bit close here, I think. Oh, power up. Oh god. And <laughs> so close. Look at how close that came. But I got the engine on just in time. And now we'll just slowly ever so slowly pull away. And now we'll speed it up to 10 times speed because this actually is really slow when you're watching it in the game. We'll back away and then ease our way back in again here. Meanwhile, as all of that was going on, up in space, Jebediah and crew were making their way around this Alterno Kerbin, going through the dark side and noticing that there were some, now don't believe that those are actually street lights or anything, that's luminescent moss that grows all over the planet and is visible from space because there's so much of it and it glows like crazy. And they want to go and investigate that because they think that there's a chance that they might be able to turn that into some sort of biofuel or actually convert it into snacks. Who knows? Now, the solar panels on this had been pointing the wrong way. And I've talked about that before where the solar panels don't line up quite right with the sun when, they're, uh, come, on from, when they come on it from the side. And so you just need to be really careful that you're paying attention to the direction they're pointing. However, we're going to just come back here and not worry about that because it's time to bring back any kind of data that we've analyzed while out there in orbit. We think we have seen how much of our uh, life support system we're using and we have a pretty good idea that of what we need to do to keep that space station going and now it's really time for the next test. We want to see what it's going to be like when we're recycling our products. So we're re-entering here and now we can go back out where we were docking up the new station life support. So the current plan for how the construction of this one is going to go is once we have these two connected, we're almost ready to actually have some Kerbals up here. But I want to have some extra solar input just in case that there's any kind of like I underestimated the amount of power I need or something like that. I put it all in a spreadsheet and I figured out how much I think I need, but we're going to see if you look on the bottom left there, oh, it went by really quick. but. There's a, de uh, not a decoupler, there is a uh, large custom made docking port that looks like a truss segment. And I'm going to bring up a truss segment that I'm going to dock underneath there. And just like the real ISS, it's going to have radiators and solar panels. And then after that, we're going to have a, an airlock. And when the airlock is on, then we will be able to come up here and I can use that airlock to go out and do any kind of EVA construction that we need on the space station. Time to dissect the KSS-2 module, which I am just going to completely ignore because you're going to get so sick of these bottom sections here. Plus there's sub-assemblies that you already can go and start getting now if you just go to the web page there, the forum page and grab that. So we'll keep working our way up here pulling off the different parts and then we'll take away the bits and pieces that make the centaur and now we have the actual payload there we are you know what i'm gonna put this sideways because that's how you see it when you're actually uh in the game so this is what it's going to look like when you're in the game you're going to be coming up to it like this where this part is docked onto the other section of the ship and this is another docking point for 
the new stuff. Although I don't know exactly what new stuff, but at least I have the docking port there ready for whatever it is I might come up with. So we have the one solar panel on here because I just wanted to make sure that if it took me a while to get to my destination that I didn't actually lose power while trying to get there. And we have a few orbiting maneuvering things on here. We had some struts to hold it into the payload fairing there other bits just to get it maneuvering. Once we can pull those off by getting a Kerbal up there like we did in Project Gateway, we'll be able to take those away, maybe stack them and hide them away in some kind of box somewhere, and then we'll deorbit all that junk like we used to do when we were building the ISS. So various different types of lights and docking ports all around the outside here different big bay windows that I get from the Lackluster Labs. A lot of this stuff actually comes from Lackluster Labs. Those are the shielded docking ports that come from B9. Those are where I'm going to dock some of our ships when we're getting ready to send them off to new and interesting locations, but when we haven't actually started our journey away from Kerbin yet. And then in here we have all kinds of life support stuff. We have our waste tank, hydrogen tank, methane tank, converter, scrubbers, purifiers, water tank. Actually, that's the water purifier there. And now we should be down to relatively few parts. We can see we have four left. It's beginning to look like a boat. All aboard! Aye, aye, Captain! All right, we have one. Oh, damn it! Whenever you do that and you grab the wrong thing and you can't control Z to get the craft back. I have to completely reload it. Well, anyway, you got the idea. This is it right here. The Odyssey Environmental Control and Life Support Unit all welded together. One part with one attachment point right there that I use to extend up the life support as I just go out and grab the different parts and I stack them in there. So you just get like the water purifier here and you put that right there although I actually flip it around so that I can see the pipes and then you just keep working your way up there so if you're building one of these at home then although you should have the craft file too but you can just stack things on here in any order that you want got all these different life support parts and it's perfectly set up so that when you have put in everything that there is all the way from the bottom up it ends up fitting exactly in there just like that. Why does she think we need new uniforms? I like mine. She thinks with only eight of us, we're going to need to keep morale up somehow, and this is something she thinks will help. Well, fine with me, I suppose. I'm tired of walking around with a helmet on all the time when I don't need one anyway, like you need to do with these old suits. She says they'll be ready when we're done with our showers. Anyway, so how are the cathane scans going? I heard you're almost ready to tell. Almost? Almost? There! Your new suits are ready. I hope you're decent, boys, because here I come. I just know you're gonna love them. All right now, let's see how you guys look. Kranz, you distinguished Snow White. Bob, yours is black for being first commander. Bill and Jeb, you're yellow for second command. Castle and Neil, you get blue for science and medical. And finally, Joseph and I will have dark orange represent being part of engineering. This is awesome! Yay! No more helmets! Yeah, this is very cool! Great idea, Valentina. Whoa. Okay, everyone, let's get back to work. We have more launches to prepare. Kesla? Are you okay? Well, that about does it, Kerbinauts. Next time on Project Odyssey, well, actually, I don't really know because I have so many ideas right now. I'm just 
brimming over with ideas. I had to start making a list in a document file of all the different things that I think I could possibly do. We have this launch right here that I'm just getting started and we'll see next time. This one is another module for our space station. But on top of that, I have these ideas for all kinds of things like dangers and challenges, different things we can explore, science and part balancing. We still have to get back to the cathane. I've got different ideas for reference missions that we need to start designing and carrying out so that we can actually go to Duna someday. More space station modules that need to be created and on top of all of it I even have some special secrets and plot twists that I'd like to throw into the mix to just advance that storyline and we'll see all of that well we won't see all of that we'll see some of that we'll see some of that and maybe more next time on Project Odyssey until then I will see you later Kerbinauts Okay.